So today we talk about deep learning computation to economic theory and its applications to distributed computing. So my name is Jung Kim. I'm with Korea University School of Electrical Engineering. So this work is by my my sons at Korea University, Myung Jae Shin, Suyeon Park, Jung Eun Park, and Tang Eun Kim. And then we have external collaborators, those are Mark Laborato at Computer Science UC Albany and Professor Min Seok Choi at Jeju National University. And then this work is under the project support. It's called Hanyang APRC. And the central name is 5G Unmanned Vehicle Research Center. So today we're going to uh, present the research results by this uh, effort or support. First of all, I would like to let you know the why and you know why we need economic theory and what is the distributed optimization here. So as you can see in the left hand side, uh, if you want to solve any kinds of problem in the real world, you are making optimization formulation. So we have linear programming here, but it can be convex programming as well. And we can get into optimal solution. So in order to design linear programming or convex programming, you have to know all the information in your variables or constraints. However, in general, so understanding or getting all the information about these kinds of constraints is very hard and it's very huge burden. That's why in order to make any kinds of optimal decision, you have to make a decision under a certain amount of uncertainty. That's why now we're gonna discuss about your decision making under uncertainty. For this uh, formulation, usually we are using microeconomic theory. So we usually use game theory stable merit theory or auction theory. So we're gonna study about that one by one very briefly today. First of all, let me introduce what is the game theory. Game theory will, is the thing what we can make a decision on the uncertainty. So suppose that we have two players, KBS and MBC, MBC and KBS. So this is called payoff matrix in game theory. So this is payoff matrix by MBC and KBS. So this is kinds of the, uh, uh, Kinds of the competition to get more people in the program. So KBS and MBC, those are very famous broadcasting company in South Korea. So MBC may play movie, opera, or comedy. KBS may play movie, opera, or comedy. And in the case, suppose that both of them are playing movie. So in that case, MBC will take 35% of the people, and KBS will take 65% of the people. So this is the point when they make a decision as movies and movies. But our problem is that we wanna, we wanna, we want them to be uh, strategic. So suppose that, uh, suppose that we want to, uh, we want to make sure that both of them are very intelligent. So in this case, suppose that MBC plays movie and you're gonna take thirty five percent or fifteen five percent and six percent. We don't know which one is better. So because the reason is that. Uh, MBC does not know what KBS will do. So if suppose that KBS is playing opera, so in that case, MBC exactly knows that it's gonna take 50% here, 58% here, 14% here. That's why MBC will play opera for sure. It's very easy. But the problem is that MBC does not know what KBS will do. So then what they have to do. So suppose that you are an MBC, then MBC will, if MBC plays movie, then it's gonna take 35%, 15% or 6%. Then we can say that uh, it, the, this decision, this decision for movie can uh, guarantee at least 15%, okay? But in the same way, suppose that MBC plays opera, so in that case, it's gonna guarantee 45, 58, and 50. So then we can say that it can guarantee at least 45%, which is minimal. minimal. But lastly, Suppose that MBC is playing with comedy, then it is gonna take 38%, 14%, and 70%. Then it means that it is gonna guarantee at least 15, 14%. So among these given three, so you have to pick the maximum, so 45%. So that is opera. This is the MBC's optimal solution. In the same way, KBS has three options. For the first option, movie, uh, it can take, take 65%. 55% or 60%. That's why this decision will guarantee at least 55%. And MBC, suppose the MBC plays opera, then you're gonna guarantee at least 42%. When MKBS plays comedy, then you're gonna guarantee at least 30%. Among these given three, 55, 42, and 30, 
and then we can say that this can take the maximum result. That's why MBC will play opera, KBS will play movie, and this point is their optimal solution and Nash equilibrium. Okay, so this point is Nash equilibrium for both of them. So next, economic theory is stable marriage. So in stable marriage, so this is very, these those are very famous actors in South Korea, and his wife is here. His wife, so, so I, I make a note here. He's A, is she's A as well. So he's B, then his wife is here B. Then if they are in the same table and they are in the same table, and it's not stable because his preference will his first preference will be her, and she will be the second preference for him. But in his case, his first preference will be here, and this is the second priority. That's why uh, both of them, both of them are with their second priority. That's why this matching is not stable. So in order to make stable the system, we have we are using the stable marriage theory. Okay. So we're gonna look at this one more details in next slide. So suppose that you want to you want to make two movies. In order to make two movies, you have to recruit actors. So you are recruiting two uh actors, Kim and Lee, here as a man and as a woman, you are you are recruiting John and Jin. So this is the uh, set of the actors, make a two movies. So in order to make a two movies, you need two uh, pairs, okay? Then for these four actors, you have to let them make a preference list. This is the preference list of the Kim. This is the preference list of the Lee. This is the preference list, preference list of John. This is the preference list of the gene. <clears throat> so in that case, Kim's first priority is John, second priority is Jin. Lee's first priority is Jin, and second priority is John. John's first priority is Kim, and second priority is Lee. Jin's first priority is Kim as well, and second priority is Lee. So in, th in this case, you can make these kinds of two combinations, okay? Then we have to check whether both of them are stable or not. So when you look at Kim, and Kim's partner is John, then you have to look at the preference list. As you can see here, Kim's first priority is John. That's why it's fine. So this is fine. And he's okay with this decision. Then you have to look at John's decision. So John's first priority is Kim. That's why she's also okay with this matching. So this is also fine. So let's look at Lee's preference list. Lee's first priority is John. That's why this is okay as well for him. So let's look at the preference list of the gene. Gene's first priority is Kim. That's why she is not satisfying with these kinds of matching. That's why Junil asked to Kim whether please be together, but he will deny because his first priority is Jin, John. That's why this is stable because she cannot move to this one or she cannot be with the other partner. That's why this system is stable, okay? So the point here is that in stable marriage theory, we cannot make everyone be satisfied with this kinds of system. Some people may not satisfy with the decision, but if the system is stable, that's fine. Sorry. So let's look at the next list. So let's look at Lee. Lee's first priority is Jin, as you can see here, but she's not her his first priority. That's why Lee will ask to Jin that please be together. But Jin will deny because Jin's first priority is Kim, and she is now with her first priority. That's why she will deny. Deny. So he, he has to be here. And John, let's look at John. Uh, John John's first priority is John's first priority is Kim, but he's not Kim. That's why she will ask to Kim to be together. And Kim's first priority is John. That's why he will accept. Uh, invitation. That's why they'll be together. They'll go to stable status. That's why in game theory, in this kinds of the stable matrix theory, uh, all kinds of unstable matching will converge to stable stable situation. That's why this this is the theory which can make the system be stable. Okay. So <clears throat> this kinds of stable marriage mechanism is developed by Gale and Shapley. Those are very famous uh, game theory economists. And both of them, uh, maybe uh, Shapley got Nobel Prize in economics. He got a lot of prize from computer science theory. So this is called Gale-Shapley algorithm. Okay, this is, 
So this we're gonna make a procedure to make a stable marriage in a faster manner. So suppose that we have four players here and they have their own first party, a preference list. So let's look at how they work. So A is one with one. So we're gonna make a, a stable situation by pairing both of them. Four by four pairing, we're gonna make this one, okay? So A want to be one, that's why A is with one. B want to, wants to be two, that's why B is here. C wants to be with three, that's why C is with three. And D wants to be with three, that's why we have overlap here. So in this case, we have to ask two, three. So when we look at the three, three, and C is here, D is here, okay? So C is the last, has the last priority, that's why D is better. That's why C wants to be with D. So that's why C wants to be D. So C will be, she, C has to find another partner, another pair. That's why he has to look at the next one. But two is already with B. That's why we have to ask to two. Which one is better between B and C? So B is here and C is here. That's why two will be with C. Two will be with C. And this two is not here anymore. That's why B will be with one here. So when you look at one is already with A, that's why we have to look at the preference of the one. So you have to compare between A and B, but B is the last priority, A is the first priority. That's why this is not here anymore. So B has to look at the next one, four. But four is not matched with the other guys. That's why four will be with B. And we have perfect matching here. That's why we are, we are stopping here, right? So the beauty of GSA algorithm is that uh, we can converse the solution quickly as well as we we have unique we have solution for sure. We have stable matching for sure here based on GSA algorithm. So why GSA algorithm? But GSA algorithm is widely used in many applications. Uh, among them, we're gonna look at the application in distributed system or computing systems. So this is router. So, so suppose that in this router, we have a head of line blocking problem. So here we have a lot of packet those who wants to go to this lead direction. And in that case, three of them wants to be this way, but here black one and green one, those are idle, but they cannot go, get these packets cannot process by this output because they are all blocked by lead packets. So this is called head of line blocking problem. In order to solve this one, we are making virtual queues here. So even though we have only one input here, we can classify the inputs into three parties, three parts. So the first one is for red, the next one is for black, the last one is for green. So we have this classification, and then red will be here, will be processed here. Black one is not black anymore, that's why black can be processed here, green can be processed here. That's why this is. Uh, this is, this can solve the head of line blocking problem. But in this case, we have to conduct matching every single time. So in order to solve this problem with a uh, stable merit theory, we have to make a preference list for these outputs, for these inputs. Suppose that inputs are one, two, three, outputs are A, B, C. So in that case, we have two packets for A here, two, one packet for B here, and two, we have one packet in B, in C, we have one package for A, two packets for B, three packets for C. So in this case, we have to make a preference list for input and output, and then we can conduct GSA algorithm and that's it. So here, so here, uh, as you can see here, one wants to process A at first because we have more and more packets. That's why we want to avoid uh, overflow. That's why in terms of A1, A has the first priority because we have to process A's packet very quickly, and then B and C, and B and C. In two, B has the highest priority here, but we have no priority for A and C, that's why randomly we will gonna print out A and C. In C, uh, C has the highest priority, and then B and then C, that's why we have C, B, A, or three. So let's let's make a preference list for A, B, and C. So in this case, in, in the viewpoint of A, uh, it takes, uh, one has the highest priority because it has two A packets, it has zero A packet, it has only one A packet. That's why in terms of A, 
it has to solve one at first and three and two. That's why it has one, three, two. In terms of B, uh, it has only one packet here. It has only one packet here. It has two packets here. That's why uh, three has the highest priority and one and two are randomly placed in here. In terms of C, uh, it has zero packets here. It has zero packets here. It has three packets here. That's why three has the highest priority and A and B are located here randomly. That's why we can make this kind of uh, preference list for the matching and we can conduct this algorithm and we can get the solution quickly uh, based on the algorithm. So this is the router routing matching mechanism in internet system. Last economic theory, we're gonna look at the auction theory, okay? So we, in here, we want to show a very simple example for the auction theory. So in order to buy this one, suppose that we have three auction, uh, we have three bidders. So it, 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 the bidding from A is $10, this, this is $8, this is $6. Then this guy will take his picture, he's gonna be a winner, winner because it pays a lot. It pays maximum value for this product. So it, it says that he can pay $10, then this auctioneer or seller will get $10. It is called revenue. So you're gonna get $10 and this product will be belongs to, uh, will belongs to A. But in this case, we have the concept of the utility. Utility is the bid minus payment. They, their bids are 10, 8, 6. That's why they have 10, 8, 6. And A's actual payment was $10. That's why it is $10. And since B and C did not get this product, that's why they did not pay anything. That's why the payment will be zero and zero. That's why this becomes zero, this becomes A, this becomes six. This is called the first price option, okay? But let's look at the second price option, okay? <clears throat> so in second price option, so suppose that we have only one product and then they are bidding all together. So they want to, A wants to pay $10, B wants to pay $8, C wants to pay $6. So in this case, A, A's bidder is the maximum, that's why A becomes winner. But the payment is not $10. The payment will be the second price, $8. That's why auctioneer seller will take $8. This is called the second price auction. Okay. So here in this case, the utilities are as follows. The bid, bid values are 10, 8, 6. That's why we have 10, 8, 6. And A actually paid $8. That's why their payment is $8. And finally, the utility is 2. But why we are using second price option? The reason is that second price option is truthful. So the reason is that suppose that we have one fake malicious user. So it has fake bid hundred dollar here. So in this case, he will gonna take this picture. <clears throat> That's why he can be a big winner. And their payment will be the second price. That's why this becomes second price. Then when you calculate the utility for everything, so A has A's bidding is 10, but A cannot get, get this picture, that's why their payment is zero. In terms of B, B's actual value is A, and he paid has pay $10. And he means that it's gonna take the negative utility. That's why this kind of behavior will not happen in real world. That's why when we are using second price option, we can initially eliminate these kinds of malicious users before starting the option. That's why <clears throat> this mechanism is truthful, what we said here. That's why in order to make a truthful system, then we have to use the second price option. But uh, in terms of auction, in terms of auction here, uh, when we consider first price auction, he can get 10 pounds. For second price auction, he can only get eight pounds. That's why in order to maximize auction as profit, then this is better, okay? And here, what I want to say is that when you are doing first price auction, it is good in terms of revenue optimal. You can take on um, $10, but it's not truthful. <clears throat> when you are using second price auction, it is truthful. That's why it's good. However, it's not optimal because it, it only gets $8. So our main purpose is that the system should be truthful as well as the auctioneer should earn $10. That's why we want to satisfy both of them. That's why we want to use, uh, we want to design optimal auction. So optimal auction is, should be truthful as well as revenue optimal, okay? 
So in order to design optimal auction, we usually using virtual valuation. This is called Mills auction here. So, so here, suppose the two users are bidding, <clears throat> their bid values are B sub two and B sub one. So suppose that this is $8, this is $10. So in this case, when we are do doing the bidding, then a, this will get the product because the price is higher, but the payment will be the second price. That's why you're gonna pay eight dollars, okay? <clears throat> but our our maximum was ten in terms of in terms of the in terms of the uh, revenue in auction year. That's why we want to make this one nearby ten. But in order to this uh mechanism, in order to design that mechanism, so we have two virtual valuation function. So this one is mapped with uh, pi sub two. That's why this is the result about that. Uh, this B sub one has also its own pi sub one function. That's why it has this kind of virtual valuation result. So we will compare that with this one for this one. And this is higher. That's why A number one will be the winner. And the payment is the second price, this one. But well, this is not an actual payment value. That's why we have to derive actual value based on this one. So we, now we have this one, but one has its own function. That's why in order to calculate real value, we have to use the inverse function. But number one has no its own function. That's why we have to apply the inverse of the set of sub one. That's why here, this is our payment, Q sub one. Suppose that this is 9.5. This is 10, 9.5. Now it has to pay $9.5. But this is nearby 10. That's why we can increase the benefit of the auctioneer or seller. That's why this is a better solution. So this kinds of this kinds of mechanism is called virtual valuation. So from now on, we want to make a mathematical framework which can calculate these kinds of equation. That's why we are using the deep learning procedure here. So up to now, uh, we studied about three major uh, economic theory who make a decision on the uncertainty. In game theory, we have to make a decision when we do not know exactly what the opposite side will do. <clears throat> in several ways, uh, we have to make a matching, but in the case, everybody cannot satisfy fully. But we have, at least we can make a sy system stable. There is four stable managing. Lastly, we can, we can get the resource or we can compact the resource for taking that uh, for taking that resource that's called the resource allocation so every um we just want to the resource allocation on the truthful operation then we can use option okay so in order to make a decision on the uncertainty then we are using these kinds of the uh, economic theory and this is called distributed optimization because we are making decision on the uncertainty so now we're gonna see how deep learning can be used for these kinds of the economic theory, especially for auction theory. So as I told you before, in order to calculate the auction's payment, suppose that this is a second price, a second winner's bidding value. This is the function of second second uh, bidder's uh, valuation function. This is winner's function and it's inverse form. Then we can calculate our virtualized or our uh, near optimal payment value. So this is the equation what we have. So this is the equation what we have here, right? <clears throat> so in that case, suppose that we have n number of bidders, n number, n number of users are competing, and by using ReLU function, we can eliminate the bidding which has less than zero value. And then based on that, we will apply set of uh, set of functions for individual bidders. Then we are using this one, and then uh, and then we're going to take, we want to classify the result into G over zero, P over zero. G over zero is for selecting the winner. So this is for selecting the winner. And this is for determining the winner's payment. So this one is for the payment, okay? So in this case, you can see the inverse function here. That's why it has inverse function as well, okay? So in order to take, in order to select the winner, we have we have to select the bidder which which is bidding the maximum value. That's why we are using softmax function here. So in this case, we just take the uh we just take the value which is the positive. That's why we just use the value function. Now we have to look at how set function is designed and that is designed with a monotonic network. 
So when you look at the monotonic network, we have simple we have some samplings over here. So when we get some values, we will add randomly more and more values. That's why we have weight value. Those are all positive. So we're gonna randomly sampling some values over here, and then we increase the revenue value, eight dollars to ten dollars, for example, and more and more, little bit more and more, and then we can increase this one smaller, more and more, and then if, right after that, we, we can take the max min or min max or any kinds of variances here. So we may have min max or max min. We can use both of them. So when we are using min max or max min, we can guarantee the monotonically. So it means that we can increase the value more and more. We are not increasing the values. Okay, that's the main point here. So we have to think why we are using monotonic network. So here we want to this value more and more. We want to increase this value more and more. We do not want to. The auctioneer wants to get does not want to get eight dollars only. Auctioneer wants to get the value as much as possible. That's why by using monitoring network, we are increasing the value more and more. In order to do some random sampling here, we are using these kinds of operations. Okay, and then when we are in order to take one value eventually, we have max min or min max, and we have some proof which says that when we are using min max or max min. We can guarantee monotonic call property here. So this is a PyTorch code about that. So as I told you before, allocation network is finding the uh, bidder which is paying, which is bidding the maximum value. So he's gonna be a winner. That's why we are using softmax in order to get the maximum value here. Then we're gonna determine who is the winner, and then. In the payment matrix, eventually we have applied the inverse function. Before applying the inverse function, we want to get only positive values. That's why we are using ReLU function here. Okay. So lastly, we have inverse function because this is our, we know our payment equation. So in our payment equation, we have these kinds of inverse function. That's why we have this one as well. So this is the final result. So suppose that we have five biddings. So when you look at the bidder, you, you can see which one is the maximum. So this one is maximum. This is negative values. That's why we're gonna ignore these kinds of three sampling results. So we have to we have to compare both of them. So this is winner, but the payment will be this one because we are using second price auction. That's why this is the result of the second price auction. But with the deep learning, the deep learning, this is this is the uh this is for determining who will gonna be a winner. So this is the maximum value. That's why it also says that number four is our winner. But actual payment is that using deep learning, we have to increase we can increase this value up to 0 0.448. So if we are using first price auction, we we'll, we'll, the auctioneer will get 0 0.4430. And if you are using second price auction, we only have 0 0.37. But when you are using deep learning solution, then this value is nearby this one. That's why auctioneer will take revenue optimal property. This is second round. This is another trial based on this neural network. <clears throat> so then we have four results here, and only this one is negative value. That's why we're gonna ignore this one. This is number two, this is two, three, this is number one, two, three, and five. <clears throat> when you look at this value, this is the first value, this is the second value. That's why when we are using conventional second price option, this will gonna be a winner, and he will gonna pay this amount of money. But we have a huge gap between them, right? That's why in order to improve this kind of payment a lot, we are using deep learning. That's why our payment becomes 0 0.9514, which is very similar to this one. That's, that's why we are saying that we are, based, we are based on the second price option. That's why we are truthful. But in addition to that, our revenue is near, nearby the first price auction's result. That's why we are revenue optimal as well. That's why we are designing optimal auction based on the deep learning framework. So here we want to see how this kind of mechanism is applied to uh, distributed computing. So these kinds of three mobile users are doing some uh, blockchain mining, but the function, the functionality in each mobile device is not that high. That's why they want to borrow some resources from cloud side. That's why they want to do some bidding in order to get the resources from this cloud. So this is based on the bidding mechanism. Okay, that's why we have to do some payment in order to increase the benefits here, profits here, and we have this algorithm should be revenue optimal for increase the benefit in auction or seller. 
That's why we have to use the uh, optimal option theory here. So this is multi-drone charging scheduling. Suppose that multiple drones are flying in the sky, they want to be charged because their lifetime is very short. So in the case, we have a charging penalty here, so they have to do the charging scheduling. So, but if someone is malicious, then this one will stay here forever and ever, and the other drones cannot be charged, they'll be dropped. That's why the mechanism, charging mechanism should be useful. That's why we have to use the second price auction. And then in order to increase the profit in this auction here or seller, we have to say that this algorithm should be revenue optimal. That's why we have to use the optimal auction through the deep learning computation, okay? So this is talking about that. This one was published in a transaction breaker technology last year from my group. So let me, let me make a summary here. So in this lecture, we just uh, briefly understand what is the economic theory and this with optimization. For this purpose, we study about game uh, theory, stable marriage and option briefly. And then we want to, uh, among these given three, we, Study the more details about the auction theory. So in auction, uh, if you are using second price auction, it is trustful. However, it's not living optimal. That's why uh, it, under the assumption of the second price auction, we have to increase the revenue. So in order to increase the revenue, we are using deep learning solutions. That's why uh, based on the deep learning, we are designing trustful as well as revenue optimal auction. And then we briefly see what can be the applications uh, for this with the computing based on these kinds of the optimal option. So we saw brief introduction to mobile blockchain mining, as well as we briefly understand multi-drone charging scheduling. And here you can see the papers about that. So here we are using a multi-charging, multi-drone charging scheduling examples. Here you can see the uh, auction-based uh, resource allocation in a local energy market in smart grid. And lastly, we have application to or smart manufacturing systems. So when you look at the papers one by one, you can see a lot of uh, variances or applications of principal option. So this is the end of the presentation today. If you have any kind of uh, questions, please let me know. Thank you for your uh, active participation and thank you for listening to my presentation.